Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Um, this video I'm just going to take you guys over setting up the DJI OcuSync ear system on a iNav and beta flight controller. Now this video is actually a part of a much longer one I recorded when I first got the system. However, I keep getting emails from people saying, can you do a video on setting it up? They probably haven't seen it because the original one was very, very long and it was bolted on the end. So what I thought I would do is separate it off into a separate one and put it out on its own. So from this point onwards, we're going to take you through connecting it up to a standard flight controller and taking you through what you need to do to set it up with either iNav or beta flight and allow you to basically get the ear system up and running. So let's get on with this video. Okay, let's take a look at the wiring. As you can see down here, I have a picture of the wiring harness that comes included with the OcuSync ear unit. At the top in yellow is your S bus connector, and that is where your serial receiver output goes to your flight controller. The brown cable is your signal ground, and that should go to the ground pin on your S bus port as well. Next is your UART TX and RX cables, which basically go to the flight controller UART ports. For for your telemetry you then have battery ground and battery plus again i should make you aware that this system supports both 3s and 4s batteries up to a maximum of 16.8 volts so you should bear that in mind when you are working out what aircraft you're going to put this on over here you can see I have a demonstration of the pinouts on a Omnibus F4 Pro Corner flight controller. This is the one I'm going to be using on this system. Now I have the S-Bus input on UART pin 6 which is the RX here and you can see that is wired to there. You then have the signal ground go into the ground pin on that same UART input. Telemetry is configured to go through UART number 1 and as you can see we have it going to RX and TX with them being crossed. The thing to always remember is the RX of the OcuSync goes to the TX on the board and the TX on the board goes to the RX on the OcuSync unit. That is the J6 setup you would have for connecting to a flight controller and no matter what flight controller you're using the basics will be the same. You will have your serial receiver input which your S bus will go to and then you will need one free UART port to use with the telemetry. Then you will need to configure it in your flight control software. In your software you would need to make sure you have connected it to a non-inverted UART port and set that port to MSP which is multi wee serial protocol with a board rate of 115200. You would also need to enable telemetry in Betaflight or iNav depending on what software you're using. So the next thing we need to do is configure our flight controller in the software. Now in this I am using iNav but the process would be very similar for Betaflight and I will show that shortly. In iNav you would connect to your flight controller and you first of all need to configure the ports for both the telemetry and the S bus inputs. So under the port settings we would now see you have your list of UART ports. Now we have connected our telemetry onto UART 1, so we now need to set this to MSP. And that is as simple as clicking that option there, turning MSP on, and making sure that the board rate is set to 115200. For telemetry, you do not need to change any of these settings over here. You simply need to set UART 1 to MSP. As we also have our S bus coming into here as well on UART 6, we also need to enable Serial RX on that port as well. So we have set UART 6 to Serial Receiver. The next thing we would do then is save and reboot and do the rest of the configuration. Once the flight controller has rebooted, we now need to set the receiver input and then turn on the telemetry. So if you go down to configuration, scroll down to receiver mode, and you would now need to set a serial based receiver, which has S bus. And then below that, you would select the provider as S bus. Next, you would need to turn on the telemetry output, which is listed under other features, and you would simply click that to on and then save and reboot. That then sets the basic settings for the S-Bus input and the telemetry output for the DJI OcuSync ear system. Okay, taking a look at Betaflight, the process is basically exactly the same as iNav. You would go into your ports, 
and set up your serial port for MSP. So in my case, it's UART6, and I would then switch on configuration MSP and make sure that the board rate is set to 115200. Once you've done that, you would then save and reboot, go into the main configuration screen and make sure that telemetry under other features is turned on as well. And again, you would then save and reboot. Overall, between Betaflight, CleanFlight, iNav, all of these flight control systems and softwares are basically a derivative of each other. Therefore, the software configuration is almost identical across all of them. And finally, we're looking here at droning on the Brain RE1. So if you were going to connect it to something like this, you would simply make sure your S bus goes to the correct port and find an empty UART port, which is a serial port. And I would use this one over here. And I would just make sure that you turn on MSP. You would save that. And then when you've got it all connected up under modules, you will notice that there's an automatically enabled module section and you've got MSP telemetry. And just make sure that kicks in as well. And that would be pretty much all you need to do for droning. As you can see, I have this set up on the desk just to demonstrate it all in action. So I have my Tyrannis wired to my DJI goggles, and then I have the OcuSync system connected to the flight controller. And on the screen, I've got the receiver tab on iNav. And as you can see, as I move my stick up and down on my throttle, you can see that the inputs on iNav all react as we would expect. So this is just to demonstrate that the OcuSync system will take your control signal via your input from your RC to your goggles, transmit it over the OcuSync system and push it straight to the flight controller. Okay, I just wanted to quickly demonstrate what you see on the on-screen display. As you can see, the camera is currently looking at the wall over there, and that's my hand dancing in front of it. If you look at the top left-hand corner, you can see that you've got battery voltage. Now, this is coming from the telemetry on the flight controller. You then have the current HD setup showing you the resolution, the HD signal, and the controller. And then in the bottom middle, you have a representation of the orientation of the aircraft. So if I actually move the flight controller and move it in different directions you can see that the little plane in the middle moves around now since originally recording this video DJI have actually released a number of firmware updates and they've added a lot more to the OSD as well as Mavlink support to the air system you can now see along the top you have a expanded battery voltage to four digits and you also have three digits for current draw so it will show you live what your amperage is as you're flying then on the end if your flight controller has GPS it will also show you the sat count and if you've got 3D lock down the left hand side they have also added a bit more data as well and they've added horizontal and vertical speed as well as the height your aircraft is from the ground at takeoff. Finally below that they have added latitude and longitude and again this is your GPS coordinates data that is taken from your flight controller so if you are using one with GPS you will get this data on the OSD and as I mentioned this is available now also via Mavlink as well as the normal UART. Finally, looking at the centre of the screen, you can now see that they have added the typical aircraft heads-up display. So they've replaced that little one which you had on the original firmware and you've now got a proper set of bars that is showing you the orientation of your aircraft in flight just to give you an improvement on the overall visibility of what your aircraft is doing. Next, I want to walk through the menu system. These are the ones you get whilst you are using the digital FPV mode with the OcuSync transceiver. So if I swipe down from the top, you can see we have a list of options. The top one is the channel selection, and this is where you set if you want it on 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 or automatic. In auto, it will switch between the two automatically, and in manual, as it suggests, it will let you select the band you want. The next option is the link settings, and this is where you link the goggles to the OcuSync transceiver. Now, the quick link will just quickly bind it without any problems, and the advanced linking is used if you're using more than one set of goggles on the system. The next option down from that is your RC inputs. So if you have connected your radio controller to the goggles via the trainer port, this will display your RC inputs directly on the screen so you can check that they are working properly. 
The next one down from this is the output settings, and this is where you can select the resolution that the system is transmitting on. Now, because these are different resolutions, there are also different aspect ratios as well. So if I select over to 640, 480, as you can see, I'm on that one already. If I go to, you can see that it switches over to that resolution. And then if I go over to 720, it goes into a widescreen image and displays that. Now, obviously 640 by 480 is a lower resolution, but that is the one that has the shortest latency as well. And DJI is specifying 50 milliseconds for that. The next menu down is called zoom and this is where you can adjust how large the display is on the screen. So as you can see I left it in 640 by 480 and I can actually adjust it so it's a very small image or a very large one and the advantage to this is it allows you to set it to your own preference because not everybody wants that full-on immersive view. Some people prefer to have a slightly smaller image and that is where you can set that up. The next menu is the brightness for the goggles. And the next one down from that is the OSD settings, and this is where you can turn on or off the OSD options that DJI have currently included. Moving down from that is where you set the camera's rotation. You have the ability to flip the camera image 180 degrees. So depending on which way you have it mounted in your frame, you can hit the flip button and it will flip it upside down or flip it the right way up, depending on what your setup is. Finally, at the bottom is exit, and when you press exit, that doesn't actually leave the menu, but it actually kicks you out of the main digital transceiver mode. So if I click on that and click OK, it puts us back to the main menu on the goggles, and if you wanted to go back into that mode, you would simply just tap onto it. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about, and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now, this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And I will do another video again soon.